This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, tradition. And Solderwell, bringing innovative brazing products to the HVAC industry with training and support like no one else. Heading over to a state university that built a brand new baseball stadium. They have a gigantic chiller. It's got a water leak, so let's go fix it. So here's our chiller. Not a very big guy. Ugh. And it looks like here, maintenance has already cut this insulation back. We're leaking right here, it looks like. So, get them out of water. And then we have our refrigerant lines that come down. Nothing too complex. A little dryer, a little sight glass, and a TXV. That's really about it. It is a Kappa chill, air-cooled chiller. 208-233 phase, running on R410A, made by Bailey Products, Incorporated. Now this chiller, this is a titanium tube and tube heat exchanger, and it is fed from, we follow the pipe, To our domestic cold boosted water so this water is already under pressure it's already being pumped and this chiller is piped in parallel to the water supply so I don't need to worry about shutting any VFDs or pumps down um, I should be able to just isolate these valves here without interfering with anything else make my repair and this is just providing chilled water for two stories up in the physical therapy area uh, they've got the hot tubs and the cold baths all right so we'll run back out we'll grab our tools and we'll grab our materials to make this repair shouldn't take too long Sleet starting. November 12th. And here's our little chiller condensing unit. Really ain't nothing to it. Right. Linux. Good to see. It's got fan cycle control. That's one thing I was wondering about. Make sure that they did remember to install and include. Since this is for a year-round application, the cold baths for physical therapy, uh, this thing will need to run and maintain head pressure throughout the winter.
All right, so what we'll do to make sure we get this as close as possible is to measure our distance from here, from the edge of the 90 to the top of the threads, but then also we gotta make sure we add our makeup. So we're gonna run our tape measure down until we hit the stop in the center of the fitting there and measure that as well. Add that to the length from here to here and then we will have the length we need to cut this nipple to match on this side here. Hey there. Hey, Kyle. Hey, what's up, buddy? Uh, not much. How you doing? Turns out the union idea isn't gonna work here. Um, I'm sure you guys understood my theory of being able to back out either this or the bottom pipe. The problem is the refrigerant lines here would prevent these being backed off anyway. Once you add that union, it's too big on the top and the bottom to be able to twist out without bumping into and or interfering with the liquid line coming in or the suction line up top. So we'll just have to go with the coupling and hope that we don't have any leaks in the future. Otherwise, we will have to just cut it all out again and repipe it from scratch. So one thing I didn't see that I wish I had seen earlier was the bottom connection of that assembly, the, uh, the brass nut that's on the bottom, we were leaking from that as well. So there was actually a small crack on the threads outside the brass nut. And when I tried to back that whole section out so I could investigate further, I actually sheared it completely off. So we definitely had cracked threads then, and that kind of changes everything now. Those nipples that come out of the brass nuts, those are from, those are actually from the factory. They're a special, you know, four or five inch section that's threaded on one side and slipped on the other. So I'm gonna have to just build this whole assembly now from scratch rather than waiting for those parts to come in from the factory, get the same color pipe, some fittings, and I'll just have to use male adapters instead of those uh, four inch nipple pieces. It's annoying that I had gone ahead and fitted all that other part up and et cetera. But at the same time, I'm kind of happy too because now I get to just start fresh and completely pipe it uh, correctly from the get go. That way when it's done, I'll know that every single connection between that heat exchanger and the union will be leak free instead of just fixing one and then a few weeks later getting a call again that you know now we've got a leak somewhere else. So I'm gonna grab something to eat and then head back to the plumber supply and pick up my materials. Actually, the most annoying part about this whole thing is the sheared off threads that I'm now gonna have to, you know, saw through and chisel away and chip out. Normally not a big deal, but it's just, you know, it's, it's facing that wall and just kind of gonna be an awkward position to try to do that in. So it is what it is, that's the life, right? scratch well we got this piped up uh, not a lot of space to work with using these adapters so um, I've got my one inch adapters here to my 90 to our T to our union everything that you see here covered in this this uh, foil insulation 
um, came from the factory on this skid. So it's all technically part of the equipment. I'm curious why they, um, you know, this heat exchanger is titanium. It's a titanium evaporator coil, and then it goes to your brass nut, and it adapts to schedule 80 PVC until you run to the end of the machine. Uh, I wonder if that's just the materials cost savings or what. Uh, I don't really care for that too much. I'd have liked for them to have just kept the, the metal pipe, but maybe that's why I don't own a manufacturing company. So I'm gonna wipe, clean up this skid here so we can open the valves slowly. And I'm gonna let it sit overnight before I should turn the chiller back on just to make sure. And then once we see that we're definitely 100% leak free, I'll have to find something similar here to try to re-insulate this, this pipe. Because this is the supply side of the chilled water. So uh, it is certainly something that needs to be insulated so we don't have condensation issues on the skid. So I am gonna leave the equipment locked out overnight. Even though I've opened the valves up, and you may wonder, well, why? What's the point? Why not just let it run? Well, I'm gonna be here tomorrow anyway for another repair somewhere else. So I wanna be able to see tomorrow that this is bone dry and we do not have any confusion between what is clearly gonna be a water leak versus uh, excessive condensation from this not being insulated. Because I'm not gonna insulate it yet until I know I'm leak free. If I were to actually start the chiller up, then you could guarantee we're gonna have, you know, 40, 50 degree water coming out of here and 100% we're gonna have condensation issues. So I just don't want any confusion tomorrow and I wanna clearly be able to determine that this is uh, bone dry. And from that point, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll insulate this back up and uh, restart the system. You gotta take extra caution guys. When you're working with PVC, this is uh, Schedule 80 PVC, and you're, you know, I know most of the time you HVAC technicians that are running PVC are doing it as a drain. So I know there's a lot of sloppiness with, uh, you know, PVC prep discipline. Uh, you're not gonna get away with that uh, under pressurized pipe. So, you know, making sure that we're cutting the pipe as uh, flush as possible and fully seating that into the socket of all your fittings, really using the primer, giving the primer a second to uh, have that reaction with the PVC to soften it up so it's ready for a real bond with the cement. Um, you know, holding, holding your pipe into the fitting uh, for, you know, 15 seconds-ish or so, giving that time to set up and begin the curing process. Again, it's, it's really easy to slap PVC together when you're just running some drain line. You know, it's not under pressure. Uh, you can do it pretty sloppy and you're still probably not gonna have a lot of issues with leaks, but when you've got this chilled water system that's, you know, operating on the, uh, the domestic cold boosted water circuit for this entire baseball stadium, uh, you're not gonna get away with it.
Yeah.